And we're no longer live. Oh, wait, no, we are live. Sorry about that. We are live. <laughs> I was like, I was caught. Don't tell anybody, but I was paying attention to something else. And here we go. Um, but I'm Jeff Fuller from Fuller and Brody Works. We have Justin Armenta from JA Digitizing Studios over there with his big green. Does it have a name? A big green machine. Big green machine. Is that its name? Yeah. Do you have two of them? Don't you have two of them, though? I do have two of them. But this, What's is, the, this, is, this is the OG. The OG. <laughs> yeah. So they're both the big green mean machines, and, and yes. they're both yes. OG. Okay. And this is the OG one, yeah. That's the OG one. All right. Well, that is the – it's A-Head, right? Yes. Tajima A-head. with the uh, Super Nintendo controller. Exactly. <laughs> but today we are going to be talking about asymmetrical or unbalanced designs on a hat. Um, but before we get into that, I will check in with a couple of people that are in the comments here. We have Miss Cindy King from Odessa, Texas. Hello, Cindy. And we have TMG Custom Designs. Hello from Orlando, Florida. And we have Laura joining us from Algonquin, Illinois. I was going nice to say that. Wrong. I know. I was so ready to butcher that. <laughs> And then it just came out right, and I was like, oh, thank God. Um, but I, I know I was going to, I was planning on setting up and running everything on my machine, and Justin's like, hold my beer. Hold my beer. I figured, why not? You always, you have your equipment at home, so you're always available. I figured I'll stay a little bit late and, and feature my machine for once. There you go. All right. So, um, Let's go ahead and talk about asymmetrical designs and kind of explain what we mean by asymmetrical. I was looking to make sure I got the title right. (laughs) What we mean by asymmetrical. Um, But basically, that's a design that if you look at it and you measure it across, the actual center does not optically look like it's in the center. So um, the design that Justin has up on his machine is an A, and it's heavier on one side than it is the other. And so when you actually center it, it's going to look off-centered. Right, yeah. So <clears throat> typically you're going to have a design that's it's heavier on one side, and then there's there's usually something that's protruding out the other direction that's going to make that true center kind of like, like Jeff said, not optically on center. So especially when you're running it on, uh, on a hat and especially on a six-panel hat, because you have that seam down the center, your eyes are definitely going to see uh, something that's off. You're doing this on the left chest. um, You're not going to really notice too much if if it's one way or another, as far as if you you place the design correctly. Uh, Gumby's the new machine. (laughs) So I have a, I have a question while you're, I didn't think you were reading the chat, Um, but I have a question. So now this is going to be the same kind of concept for, a letter that, because like you said, left chest not necessarily going to matter unless if it's over a pocket. Exactly. So yeah, over a pocket, anything I guess that you that you your vision can easily recognize that there is a center to it, and there's there has to be some balance. Uh, this is definitely going to be a case where you're going to want to adjust it. And so we kind of wanted to show you. I'm going to go ahead and run a hat with this with this particular design so you can kind of get a visual of of what we're talking about and then how to adjust the design whether in the digitizing software or on the machine so you can kind of trick the eye into making the design look more center all right so i will run through the comments one more time before we go into the um, questions here we've got barb joining us from north central minnesota um we have miss letty walker from walker woods creation who renamed your machine to gumby and i agree just gonna put that out there (laughs) gumby huh yeah okay new name for it we'll have to get a sticker for it i know someone that can do that yeah all right so as you can see I'm not sure if you can see too well. True center of this design is going to be right in this area. I don't know why. Okay. Not true center of the. There we go. Uh, 
the true center of the design is where this little red crosshairs is. So as you can see, I'm going to go ahead and, and draw a line down that center so you can kind of see it better visually. Sorry, I just forgot to turn off the volume on the software. So as you can see, this A is, is a lot heavier on the right side or the left side as you're wearing uh, than the left side. So when you do have this design on a hat, you are going to have quite a bit of weight on that right side. So visually, I think it's going to look pretty off center. Um, so. I mean, even with the the one leg going longer than the other vertically it's going to look off center too or it's going to look like it sits a lot higher than that. right exactly so i'm gonna i already have the i'm sure you guys see it i have the first tag going that's going to be true center so you can take a look at the a and how it looks on the hat there's my big green machine that'll be there doing its work um so there's a couple of different ways that you can do to fix the issue uh on a design like this um there's actually a couple of of other ones that i pulled up here that i've done that are not as extreme as the a but i think it still has that kind of that look of heavy on one side and like you were mentioning, the the vertical area of this design is a lot heavier than the bottom area. And then you have the bottom of the L kind of protruding to the right. So I don't know if you guys can see that faint hat picture in the back there. Yep. Um, so true center is right on the seam. This one I don't think is, is quite as bad. Um, I think this is a... a situation where, in my opinion, uh, when you do have a design that might be heavier on one side and this one is being on the right side, I actually will choose the center that's more in the, the full body of the design. Uh, so if you put most of the weight on just the most surface area of the design that's sewn, it's going to have kind of that look where it's centered. So the L, even though it is kind of, a, it is definitely asymmetrical, um, I think it actually works at true center. I mean, even if you wanted to move it over a little bit. That still doesn't look too bad maybe centering it on the on the red part of the L. But I think there's, there's design by design that's really gonna dictate um, how much you need to to adjust it one way or another, side by side. So right. So would you recommend that um, if your design is true center but optically not centered, would you lean more towards optically centering it every time or would you lean towards um trying to do true center first and seeing if that works i typically i mean if i that's that's what's kind of cool about you know the embroidery software now you can drop a a virtual garment in the background so you can kind of see what it looks like when i'm digitizing for a customer i always leave it at actual center i don't want to make that decision for them um, and let's say there's times where someone may send me a design like this and they, they'll either give me a guideline or, hold on, I got a problem and change here. Um, they may give me a, a guideline or tell me, hey, I want this centered, off center to make sure that it opti optically looks better. Okay. So you're leaving that up to them now. Um, in every software, there's a different way to change your start and stop point. So when Justin's done changing his bobbin, 
I'm going to sucker him into showing you guys how he can change the start and stop point in his software since that's the one we have up. Yeah. And here we go. All right. So let's go back to the A since this one is, is quite a bit of difference. To me, uh, a lot of times I will use kind of a visual on here, either a vector line or, or just plotting a, a running system vertical line. This is why I can kind of visually see on how much which direction is kind of too heavy. And I'll move that over to kind of see where it looks kind of balanced, even though this area is technically, mathematically, it's, it's further on this side. I, I think trying to find that point within the A where the body is kind of centered, I think it's gonna look more aesthetically pleasing to the eye when it is centered on it, especially on the six panel hat. So there's a couple of different ways to access it in in Wilcom, there is this icon where it's the start and auto start and end settings. If you right click on it, it'll pull up the, the window for your settings. So right now it is set to automatically start and stop at the center, at the true center. Um, but you do have this option to digitize start and end point manually. So I choose that. Of course, height wise, I'm going to stay the same. So I'm going to go ahead and line it up with the the true center height wise, and then I'm going to go ahead and use that line for my center point. And it does, now you can see the center point is plotted at the area that is going to be more appealing to the eye, and that's going to change it. Another way of doing it is, especially a, a, a quick way of doing it, if you do have a, a design on the machine and you are seeing that it's off center. We hadn't quite seen it before on, on screen. Like the L, I think there's that one there is, is kind of slightly heavier on one side, but true center could have possibly worked. But maybe when you put it on the hat, just to the eye, it looks a little bit off. So you could always just bump up your your starting point of your needle on the machine, rotate your hat just a little bit either way, and you can make that adjustment there. Personally, I, I like doing it on in the software just because it's as simple as that. It's something where I can save it next, you know, in the in the file. So next time, it's always going to be the same place. It's not going to be guesswork on the machine. No, and this is one of those things too, where if you actually if you print off your run sheet, a lot of times they'll have crosshairs that'll show you where the machine is going to start and where the center point is plotted, and you can cut that out and lay it on top of your garment. Um, right. So if you are going to be and you're trying to guess maybe where you want to set that you can do that that way um it's really important when you do that if you're going to start a design off center that you write it down um and i cannot push that enough that when you make a change in a file or you run a different file or you nudge a design over a little bit to accommodate for something that you write it down because it's really really embarrassing to ask your customer for the garment that you gave them last time so that you can see where you place it and then you start all that guesswork over again where if you just wrote it down and you kept a log of it you wouldn't need to do that it's it's the same with colors too right right exactly yeah that's why that's why i usually opt to do it within the software as once you save the file and it's finding its final resting place and save where it's going to be saved that way the file is going to be automatically centered to where you want it centered every single time it's not going to be even if it is a notation of oh it's certain distance from the, the center seam then you have measuring and stuff like that that you have to do um, but yeah definitely we use a spec sheet like this that has the design printout any notes that we're going to have on the design if, if there's anything that we need to remember for next time file names color sequences we have a spreadsheet for every every design that we do. So that's definitely something that um, you'll want to keep track of. Like Jeff said, it's, there's times where paperwork is lost and we have that 
awkward call of saying, I know we've done this for you five times, but what color did we run these in for you? Yep. So one thing that you can do too in the software, and I believe every software that I've ever used has this ability, is that you can add notes within the file um, to where you can annotate that kind of stuff. You just have to make sure that you're calling the right file name. But um, after Justin shows us this, we'll go ahead and uh, I'll have Justin show you guys where you can drop notes in the file. Yeah. So this is the hat that was ran in True Center. So as you can see, the hat looks quite a bit off to the to this side here. It looks like it's completely off center. It looks like it's ran incorrectly, in my opinion. So in designs like this, um, like I said. I think the best bet is even if you want to, if you have sample hats to to run a sample to see it visually, if you're not quite getting it on screen, um, this is definitely something that you're going to run into on these type of asymmetrical designs. Yeah. So, so I cheated already and saved one that was off center and ready to go. So I'm going to go ahead and get that started on the machine. Okay. All right. So now that we're back, I told them you'd show them where they can save those notes in the file. Yeah. So this little icon here, there's a design information. And that's going to pull up this window here that's going to have a summary. And you can set titles, subjects, authors. If you, if you go by maybe salespeople or different digitizers that you have, uh, tags and comments. So this is definitely an area where you can kind of save all your notes that you're that you need to save. This also gives you kind of um, a breakdown of size and, and pictures, colors, stops, all this information as far as the, the design. Uh, order, again, this is more, just more information, internal stuff that you can add, uh, add order numbers and order dates. Uh, this, is, this is something where if you're really integrating your embroidery software into your ordering process, uh, this is definitely a good tool to use. Kind of get some order notes in here as well. Thread colors, it's going gonna to keep track of the actual thread colors that you choose. Uh, I tend to save everything as far as my native EMB files in the thread colors that are going to match, uh, you know, the artwork as close as possible. Um, to make sure that it does reference the thread that we actually have in house, uh, so we remember for next time. And if you're having a hard time matching those things, you can go to threadconverter.com. Exactly. Use the handy dandy thread converter tool, which is really awesome um, that Matt developed. And I use constantly, and I'm pretty sure a lot of other people do too. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, I'm yeah, going to grab a few more right. comments here. We've got Frank joining us from the UK. Hello, Frank. We've got Robert from San Diego. Hello. And we have Suzanne from Rhode Island. Hello. And we have the Sassy Summer joining us from New York. See, I know I know where people live. Um, <laughs> uh, Barb says, I use spec sheets and take a photo of the final project, product, which is I don't take a photo, and I probably should. I use photos and put it on the back seat of the of the spec sheet. Um, we do use these little plastic sheets on our spec sheet. I'll throw photos in the back if it is kind of an abnormal project or a certain placement that's that's abnormally done, um, just so we could reference that in future use. But taking a photo of every one that's probably even even better idea. Yep. Um... Gina says that she tries to take a picture of the finished project to include in the folder on the computer where the embroidery design is stored. And notes included in the design file are a must. Now, if they add a feature of including a pic, that would be awesome. It it would be, but I imagine your file size would grow exponentially. Yeah. yeah. I know when I document, and if I document in the file, I actually put the date that I ran the job last. So... Um, it's basically kind of like my last confirmed date of this is what I used in case if, 
you know, for some strange reason, I had to swap out um, Madeira for Isoport or for Filtech. Then I have that color match and that I made the last job on this. And um, if I make a change in the file, I'll note that I made a change in the file. And it's just trying to keep your information as current as you can for when they come back and reorder. Because you'll think, oh, good, this is out the door. I never have to see this again. And then two months later, we love them. Can we have 24 more? <laughs> and your head just kind of goes down. Yeah, so yeah, when we when we run samples here, I definitely just uh, like I said, I always save the EMB file or the native file with the, the correct color that we have in house. Uh, I print out just the the spec sheet from directly from Wellcom. I'll go ahead and show that as well. So if you go up to print preview, this is going to give you some information as far as options that you want to print out. So the production worksheet. Is going to have you fonts and all that that you set up as far as the layout of the of the spec sheet itself. Uh, barcode that is if you use the barcode system. Uh, I know Tajima has a system where you can click the barcode or scan the barcode and it's going to pull up all the information in the design. Uh, the colorways you can save different colorways. Uh, within Wilcom, so if you have say a sequence for dark garments and a sequence for light, uh, sequence for light garments, you can save those two colorways, and you can include them on your either your current window that you have open, or you can include all of them. Zoom, I always leave it one to one to make sure that when you are printing it out, you are having an actual size of that design. Uh, this is where you can choose all the different <clears throat> options as far as what are there. Are going to print out. Uh, if you do have a background color and you want to print it out, if you do have products involved, you can print that out as well for the virtual products. You have your crosshairs for your start and stop points, um, hoops, different other things. If you do have it in the background, it will print out for you. Information, uh, full information is going to be if you have all the pitch count and size, color wise. All this information here, you can shorten that up to uh, shorter shorter information or you can like none if you want just the image to print out. Uh, but there's quite a bit of, of choices that you can go with as far as the... Um, sure. I can honestly say this is one of those things that once I get it set, I don't ever really mess with it and don't go back in there and look at the options. Exactly. Yeah, I pretty much because you know I did just try to show other people. I pretty much give it where it shows all the information, of course, the image. I I don't worry about any backdrops or anything like that because not always do I know the the garment color or colors of the things are going on. Um, yeah, that's it's definitely some good information as far as keeping track, especially if you are. Dealing with the designs that you do have to manipulate or change a little bit because of issues like this. So, I do have one other design that was kind of, I know that L was slightly off. Um, this C. This C is always bugging me. Uh, pretty recognizable couple of major league teams. I think it's the C for the Chicago Bears and it's the C for the Cincinnati Reds. But the uh, this little point out here really creates a problem with the center center point in my opinion. So again, I'm gonna plot a point just so it's a little bit more evident. Make it red. And that's the true center, and if that's the center point. Um, as you can see, it's a lot heavier on the right side than it is on the left. So again, kind of using that rule of thumb of, of trying to find center mass, uh, that's the biggest part of the logo. I think that just works best as far as centering the design. Um, so if, if you took the body of the C, if it was just a regular C without this point, that's where I kind of lean towards. So if you have your apex at the top and bottom of that curve of the C, 
if you set that at your at your center point, I think aesthetically that C looks a lot more balanced on that, even though it, it is technically extending out further on this side. Only by a quarter of an inch or so, maybe an eight. All right. I'm doing really good at buttons today, Justin. I see that. You're on it. All right. So, two hats, two center points. This one here, off center, even though it is true center. This one here, we did. There we go. We did uh, move the center point over in the software. It's this type of shape of a, of a letter italicized with kind of those wispy curves and stuff like that. Um, it's, it's still, if you stare at it, it's still going to look off center, I think, especially when you have a very analytical mind. Um, but I think this, this one here looks a lot better to the eye than this one. This one looks like it's, it's definitely off center. And this one looks more centered and pleasing to the eye so right definitely want to make those adjustments on those asymmetrical that's one of those things i'd say when in doubt ask your customer do you like option a or option b because exactly the complaint will come i'm actually going to keep these hats around so i can use that as an example when i do see um, a design come my way that is going on a, an especially on a six panel hat um, I'm definitely going to look at or say these to kind of show people the difference. All right. If you want true, true center be your design, or if you want um, something that's going to look a little bit more pleasing to the eye. All right. there, there, there are designs too that, that, that might be heavier on one side. Like if you have where there's an emblem on the left side and then maybe a couple lines of text that come out. Those are really hard to do because I think no matter what, they're they're gonna be unbalanced on that side that has the larger icon to it or emblem. Um, because moving the center point on something like that, it's not gonna help uh, balance that left to right look to it. All right. Well, I'm gonna go back and grab some um, questions because we have two questions. But first, I'm gonna bring up this comment. Uh, Barb likes the first one. Uh. <laughs> which is why I say ask your customer because um, everybody has their own kind of which one they prefer. Right. But uh, Barb also asked here, I'll get it there. Justin, is the hat image in the background, is that in Wilcom or is that something that you created? That is in Wilcom. And can you show us how you pull it up? Yeah, sure. So again, using the icons that I have pulled up and if you right click anywhere on the, the open area of your of your window here. This is where you're going to choose uh, what set of bank of icons that you want to use, or uh, quick buttons for for functions. I'm not sure exactly what the term is for them, um, but this one here is permanently on my desktop. Uh, but the little shirt here, again, you can right click on it, and it's going to pull up this docker, and this is. There's a bunch of stock products that they have, uh, different folders, headwear is where I found this one, has different types of headwear, has beanies. I have just the kind of the generic hat there, but if you wanted to change it up, different hats that you can choose from, a bucket hat. So yeah, that's, that's definitely a, a nice feature that it has as far as Doctor. Now I'm going to make Justin throw something at me. But if you go under settings, you can actually change the color. Yes, you can. Then you can come in here and change the color of the garment that you have in the background. Now it's a blue bucket hat. Yeah. <laughs> um, you could also, where is it? Down here. If you click custom, you could actually upload your own images. If there is a particular hat that you use a lot that's real popular, um pretty much all the where did that go where i don't know go? i thought maybe uh, we deleted it pretty much all the uh 
catalogs out there are going to have images that you can save directly, you know, just right off the web, or they actually have <clears throat> folders that you can download with their product images. So if you run a lot of Richardson hats, you know, the, the famous 112, um, you can bring in those images of those hats that you use a lot, and you can store them in there so you can drop them in the background. So it's definitely a nice feature to use in Wilcox. Absolutely. All right. So Cindy asks, so the way to put your perfect center is to manually set it. So for optical center. That's what I do in the software. Um, I, like I said, I don't like relying, relying on the machine. Even if you do have a notation, uh, I think that's putting more work on the operator during production where you now have to, you're going to be hoping your hat by center. You definitely don't want to start getting into trying to hoop them off center because that's when you're going to really run into a bunch of variations as far as where that center point is on your hat. So if you if you allow it to be where you're you're hoping normally, you hoop it on center, you you load the hat on center and you have it in your file, then it's going to take care of it. Um, if you do have a needed quick adjustment on the machine and you know that you know it's leaning one way or another, you can just manually kind of move your head. I guess you can't see that too well without a hat on there. Um, but you can rotate the, the hat frame one way or another so you can kind of make that adjustment on, on, on the machine. So, But yes, um, if you do need a change uh, because of the asymmetrical or the unbalanced, then the manual center point is the definitely way to go. Otherwise, the other options that you have for the center point it's going to mathematically calculate that so you can have the center point at the bottom center bottom right corner and these are going to be taking the actual you know from the actual center it's, it's, it's not going to be it's not going to know that you're going to you're trying to do this off center i guess what you're saying so right it's so not that, like you yeah. can just tell it i want to set you a quarter inch to the right i want my center right. point a quarter inch to the right i think the only way to do that is to actually digitize the point um otherwise it's going to try and find based off of the measurement it knows the width it's going to go exactly half of that exactly yeah so yeah all these all these settings here are going to be mathematically driven from uh the size of the design itself um within the software so there's no there's no AI built into Wilcom yet that can recognize something like what a human's going to see and, and think that it's off. So. Okay. All right. So let me grab this comment here. Uh, I even center my hoop, center hoop, my lower left panel cap designs. I center hoop all my hats. Um, I've, uh, I've tried off center hooping and it never really works out that well for me. Unless if I'm trying to hoop the back of a hat <laughs> using a cap driver and I'll hoop it basically backwards um, and stick it on the cap driver and go from there. So let's see here. Um, but if you guys have any questions, make sure you drop them there in the comments. Um, and Justin, you ran those both on unstructured hats, right? No, they're, they're just a, a lower profile, but they are structured hats. They are structured. Okay. Yeah, they are the CP80 from Sandmark. Okay. Um, one other thing as far as centering, uh, as far as centering goes, I do have customers that, and I think you like your design centered at the bottom center for hats. Is that correct, Jeff? Um, for the most part, I like to have them bottom centered. I actually found that um, with both of my machines, I can, in the middle of a trace, when it gets to the bottom, section of the design i can pause it and i can adjust the design um in the middle of the trace so yeah um the one thing that just let me uh put a hat on really quick if you do have the design centered at the bottom it kind of gives you a guide that if you know it's going to be starting at the center, that it gives you a guide of how low you can start that design. So you're not starting center of the design, waiting for the trace to go around and seeing where 
how close it is getting to your to your hoop. Mm-hmm. So it is it is I guess it's a quicker way to kind of identify where your maximum height or minimum height is going to be as far as the bottom of the of the design. So right, it gives you kind of that visual. This is how low I can go with my presser foot before I run a needle into my hoop. Right, exactly. So we've got a couple comments here from Cindy. You would have to be pretty perfect to hoop off center for every cap. I definitely agree. Um, and that's one nice machine, Justin. There's my big green machine. And where's its twin? <laughs> There's the twin there. We got a two single heads. And then there's the fixer over there. Okay. Awesome. And Cindy says, I always forget the center at the bottom. No time to teach me something new. (laughs) Um, It's something that helped me a lot, especially when I was first starting out, that I could get the design really low to the brim and feel confident that I'm not going to run a needle into my hat hoop. Um, yeah. I know on some machines that you can open up the parameters. Um, so if your hat, like they have a safe sewing area, you can extend that and you have to be really careful that you're not going to drive a needle into a hoop because I have done that on a cap hoop before and it is very scary. Yeah, for sure. But... If we don't have any questions here, I think we're going to go ahead and end early. Um, There you go. I trace no matter what. And great tour, Justin. Um, So I'll go ahead and pull this up like this. And uh, if there aren't any questions, I think we can go ahead and end early. We'll all get an early evening. Time to run home for Justin and get some food. Mm -hmm. So again, just a quick little review. Dealing with designs that are either unbalanced or asymmetrical. So you have one that is true center that Gina likes better, I think she said, or Barb. Uh, that does to the eye, it does look a little bit off center. So you make your adjustments with the center point, kind of manually move it so it optically looks better to the eye and it's going to work a little bit better on your six panel hat or any hat for that matter. All right. Well, I guess we'll go ahead and wrap it up here. Um, announcements coming up is Applique Getaway is coming up. I'm going to be there uh, teaching some classes. So if you guys want to register for that, you can go to applicategetaway.com and register. Uh, the Embroidery Nerd shirts are hopefully going to get printed next week and be out the door and on to the destination to people. So we're really excited for that as well. Uh, and I think that's all the announcements I have, Justin. Yep. Okay, I was just checking to see if you had any. Um, but with that, everybody, that is Justin Armento from JA Digitizing Studios, and I'm Jeff Fuller from Fuller Embroidery Works. We are both here representing the Embroidery Nerd, and we will catch you guys next time. Good night, everybody.